Welcome to Simple Career, a channel which intends to help you get hired, provide valuable career tips by bringing professionals from different industries, and helping you increase the amount of knowledge to shape your career. In today's video, we have Connor, who works as a software engineer at Google. He has over six years of experience, and he is going to explain based on his experience how to get a job at Google as a software engineer. So if you want to watch more of such videos, ensure you hit the subscribe and hit the like button as well. So without any further ado, let's welcome Connor Livingston. Happy to be here. So Connor, can you tell us a little bit more about yourself and about your experience of working at Google? Of course. Yes. Um so I've been working at Google for about two years, and I work on the hotel ads quality team at Google. Basically, the product that my team works on is when you search for hotels, like Hotel San Francisco, you'll see on the search results page a map come up that shows the location of different hotels and how much it costs to book them. Now, Google is a dream company for a lot of youngsters. A lot of people aspire to be a part of Google. So how would you suggest one should prepare themselves? Yeah, that's a good question. I think that a lot of fan companies do lead code style interviews. So I would definitely advise to practice lead code questions. And a good goal, in my opinion, is to be able to solve medium difficulty level problems within 40 minutes. So if you can consistently do that, I think you'll be in a pretty good position. And for me, when I was preparing for Google, I found that a pretty good way to keep up my motivation while practicing lead code was to forget about the interview and focus on the thrill of competitive programming. I competed in a lot of competitions and I thought that it was actually pretty fun. And that's what kept me going because it, it is a lot of work to prepare. And if it's not fun, then it's really hard to keep going. So focus on, focus on just enjoying competitive programming. And before you know it, you'll be in a good position to pass the interviews. And the other thing that I wanted to say about that is don't give up. In, in my case, I actually interviewed at Google in 2016 and I failed. And I kept, but I kept practicing and I kept learning new things. And I tried again in 2018 and here I am, it worked out. Now, in terms of the interview process, can you tell us a little bit more about the interview process for a software engineering role at Google? Yeah, yeah, of course. So Google's software engineer interview process has several steps. First, there's the initial call with the recruiter. And this is pretty easy, just making sure that you're generally the right kind of person for the job, that you're a technic technical skills, that you are interested in the job. And after that, there's a technical phone screen. Usually there's two of these calls where you're going to be talking to software engineers and they're going to ask you a leak code style coding challenge question. And each of those will be about 45 minutes long. And you'll, the first couple minutes will be just talking to them, getting to know them, and them getting to know you. And the next, the most, most of the interview will be dedicated to the actual coding challenge. And the last couple of minutes, the interviewer will usually try to reserve about five minutes if you have any questions for them. And yeah, so that's the, that's the second step. The third step is the actual on-site interviews. So assuming that step two goes well, your recruiter will reach out to you and schedule on-site interviews. And that is the most intense step by far. Basically, you'll come to the office and you'll have a full day of interviews, five back-to-back -back interviews, including... Um, so five coding challenge interviews, and then you'll, you also get a lunch break <laughs> between the second and third or the third and fourth. And that's, that's 
the same style of interviews as the phone screen, but you'll be writing on a whiteboard instead of typing in a Google Doc. And um, yeah, that's the third step. And then after that, you're you're pretty much done. And the the next things that happen is your packet gets sent to a hiring committee and the hiring committee, it's their job to decide whether or not to extend an offer. And if the, if your packet passes hiring committee, then the next step is to do team matching. So your recruiter will reach out to you and say like, what kind of team do you want to work on? Do you have any specific interests? And you'll, your recruiter will set up a bunch of calls with you with different managers and you'll have like a 30 minute call with each of these managers and learn more about what their team is doing. They can learn more about you. It's almost like it's your turn to interview Google. Whereas up until then Google was interviewing you and then you get to pick the team that you know you feel like you'd be the best fit for. So yeah, that's pretty much, that's pretty much it. And at that point, you'll get an official offer, and you'll be able to negotiate your salary and your comp- and your stock options and all of, all forms of all parts of your compensation. You'll be able to negotiate and then sign the offer, and that's pretty much it. I think all those steps sound intimidating, but I think the key point to remember as an interviewee is that your recruiter and your interviewers are on your side. They want you to succeed. They're not, they're not trying to expose your lack of knowledge or mm, they're not trying to, they don't want you to fail the interview. They want you to pass. They want you to succeed. And if you keep that in mind, the whole process might be a little bit more comfortable. Now, in terms of a role of a software engineer, what are their main KPIs? So yeah, so moving on to your next question. Um, about the KPIs of of a software engineer, I think I think the KPIs vary a lot by team. Um, some teams are very focused on user metrics like click through rate and action completion, whereas other teams are more focused on reducing latency and error rates. But in general, at Google, there's three areas that software engineers are judged on when it comes to performance reviews and promotion. And those areas are impact, difficulty, and leadership. Impact is depends on your team's KPIs. So for example, if you work on a team that focuses on user metrics like click-through rate and action completion, then if you launch some project that had uh, that increased click-through rates by 1%, for example, then that would be an example of your impact. Difficulty is is the second aspect that SWEs are judged on. And difficulty is basically how, how it's it's pretty obvious, I think, but it's it's like, could anybody have done this? Or did you are you it was it difficult enough that y- you had the unique knowledge and and the work that you put into it allowed you to to complete this project. Um, yeah. So the, the third one is leadership. Leadership is about how you're influencing others and guiding the execution of more junior engineers on while they're working on the implementation. You're kind of working on the technical direction and the high level design making sure that all of the pieces fit together. Now, you have over six years of experience working in the tech industry, working as a software engineer. So if you had to look back as a fresher or as a fresh graduate, what would you have done differently? That's a good question. I think that the most important thing when you're getting started is to optimize for learning rather than optimizing for salary or location or anything like that. I think that the reason it's so important to learn 
early on is because that's how you can build up your career capital so that you can um, become a more valuable employee. And I think one, one thing is there's a couple of components of learning. First thing is to try to make sure that the, the people who want to hire you are good mentors. Like they actually care about your personal development. They're not just going to ask you to cough up a bunch of code and finish the, the business requirement, but they actually understand what it's like to be a software engineer and the difficulties and the, the nuances. And if you can find somebody like that to hire you, I think that's a good, good thing to shoot for. And another thing is, I think you should try to discover what the engineering culture is like at the company before joining. If the, I'll, and I'll give you an example from my personal life. So I was interviewing at several companies after I graduated from college. And one of the companies that I interviewed at, I was talking to them on the phone. I, I'd already passed the interview and I was just trying to decide whether or not to accept the offer. And the, I started talking to them about one of their like core pieces of software that their, that their team is, is working on. And I realized that they don't have any unit tests for it. And that was a huge red flag because for any significant, as, as most software engineers are familiar with um, any significant size project with multiple people working on it, if there's no unit tests, then it's a huge manual effort every time to verify that the product is working as expected before releasing a new version. And inevitably manual testing will miss a lot of things that unit testing can catch. And when he said that and the effect that it has on their development velocity and release velocity, I was like, oh, no thanks. I'm not gonna join this company <laughs> because I think that a more senior person might be able to influence the team to start writing unit tests. But me as a junior person coming in and saying, hey, hey, everybody who's more senior than me and has more experience than me, you should be doing this differently. And I'm smarter than you, even though I'm a junior person. I, it's very unlikely that people will respect your opinion and you, you'll be able to cause organization-wide change at that point in your career. So. I would focus on getting a good engineering culture from the beginning, and that will set you up for a lot of learning and best practices that will pay, pay back dividends to you as your career goes on. Now, there are so many coding languages. Is there a specific coding language one should know if they are planning to apply to Google as a software engineer? That's a really good question. I think it depends on your goal, but if your goal is to work at a fan company, I would say it doesn't matter. And the reason I say that is because most fan companies are language agnostic because they realize that a smart developer can pick up a new language quickly. For me personally, I, um, in my current job, I use C++ every day but before i joined google i didn't know c plus plus i actually didn't even do my interviews in c plus plus i did my interviews in python um, so i would say more than mastering a specific language um, i would focus on increasing your understanding of computer science fundamentals yeah so you don't need to know a specific language to get into fan companies. And finally, what advice would you give to anyone who's actually preparing themselves for a software engineering interview or maybe is an undergrad who is actually planning of building a career in the software engineering field? Yeah, I think this is a really good question. And I think that a lot of time in the past, I've gotten this one wrong. So I think the 
the most useful insight that I've had in this area is to cultivate your curiosity. And the reason I say this is because software engineering is not a routine-based job. Software engineering requires a lot of creativity and connecting abstract ideas to find non-obvious solutions to challenging problems. So I think rather than focusing on external rewards like salary or prestige or recognition, I think the best advice that I can give is to focus on developing your own curiosity in what you're working on and getting a deep satisfaction, a personal satisfaction from solving challenging problems. I think if these are the things that motivate you, these intrinsic things, I think you will go far. Thank you.